Hey, it's Greg from The Code Creative. In this video on Tone.js, we're going to look at using our computer's keyboard, or our QWERTY keyboard, to play some of the sounds that we've been creating with Tone.js. Now, if you checked out the last video in this series, video number three, you know that there we use the trigger attack release method in order to trigger the notes. But in that case, the first argument that we passed in, which was the notes pitch, was the same each time because it was hard coded. So what we want to do here now is make that pitch argument dynamic. And that way we can make our computer's keyboard function more like a musical instrument. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use this little library called Audio Keys. And I'm going to drop a link to the GitHub repo here. So what Audio Keys is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to map the keys on our computer keyboard to musical pitches. And you can see they have two different options for mappings here, which we'll talk about in a moment. But first, what we'll need to do is we'll need to install Audio Keys. And as you can see, you can install the NPM package, or you can grab the source code directly. And that's what I'm going to do here, just for the sake of simplicity. So I'm going to click on dist slash audio keys dot min dot JS. I'll copy this. And then I'm going to go into my code editor, and I'm going to make a new file. And I'll call it audio keys dot min dot JS. And this is where I'll paste all that code in. OK, and we can close that now. And then in my index.html file, you can see I just have some basic boilerplate here. But here on line 7, you'll see that I have a script tag for that audio keys library. Also, I have a script tag following that for the CDN for Tone.js. And then we've got a script tag for our very own custom app.js file, which is where we're going to be writing our code in. All right, so let's get to it then. Let's switch over to our app.js file. And here you can see that I've already got an instance of a tone.synth set up. I've also routed it to the destination, which is just another way of saying your speakers or your computer speakers. With that set up, let's go ahead and create an instance of audio keys. We'll assign it to a const. I'm going to call it keyboard. And I'll say a new audio keys. And we'll instantiate it just like that. Now this audio keys instance is going to give us access to a couple methods. One of them is called down, and one of them is called up. And these are going to work with our key down and key up events. And I actually have a really nice course on these events called DOM events in JavaScript. I'm going to leave you a link in the description down below. But anyway, like I said, this keyboard object is going to give us access to a down method. And in this method, we can pass a callback function. And this is going to give us access to the key, or the key on our keyboard. So let's call it key, and first of all, let's just log this out to the console to see exactly what we get. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my browser, and on my computer's keyboard, I'm going to hit the A key. And there we can see in the console, let's just enlarge that a little bit, we can see what we get. So we get this object, and in particular, I want you to take note of this frequency property here. So this frequency is going to represent the pitch of the note. And what we can do is we can check out this musical frequency chart. And if we look for that 261, let's scroll down a little bit, we can see that that's equivalent to the note C4, 4 representing the octave. But let's go back to our code. And rather than just logging out the key to the console, let's use that trigger attack release method that Tone.js gives us. We'll use it on the synth. And opposed to the previous video, where we gave this a hard-coded value for the first argument, what we're going to do is now we're going to pass in key.frequency. Remember that frequency property that we saw here? So that's going to tell Tone.js what pitch to play. And the second value for this video, we'll hard-code this. We'll make it an eighth note, so we'll give it a value of 8n. Now if we go back to the browser, I'm going to play some keys on my computer's keyboard, and let's see what we get. So now you can see I'm able to actually play a full melody on my computer's keyboard. The other thing I wanted to show you was what we mentioned earlier, which is that we have two different mappings, or two different layouts, that we can use. So you can see in this first one that we have our notes mapped here, in this area highlighted by the orange background. But this also gives us the option to change the octave that we're in. So the Z key will bring us down an octave, the X key will bring us up an octave. And we also have some velocity mapping here, but to take advantage of this, we'd have to tweak our code for our tone.synth, which we're not going to do in this video. This second layout gives us two octaves of notes. 
So you can see here we have C in one octave, and here we have C in a higher octave, and so on and so forth. So in order to choose one of these layouts, we can pass in an options object to audio keys, and there's a property we can use called rows. If we choose one, that will be the default, which is what we've been using so far. And I'll give you an example of how we can change the octave of the notes using this particular mapping. So I'm going to go ahead and play. So you can see there I'm changing the octaves. However, if I set rows to a value of 2, well, now I have that second mapping, and I can play around with those two different octaves. So thanks for checking out this video in the Tone.js series. Remember to subscribe to the channel, give me a like, leave me a comment down below, and I'll see you next time.